watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Welcome again to another wonderful time in God's presence. God sent his word that will heal and delivered from destruction. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word of God will heal you. The Word of God will heal your body. The Word of God will heal your mind. The Word of God will heal your emotion. God's Word will heal your marriage, will heal your precious relationships. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of God's Word, you are delivered from all destruction. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for another wonderful time in your presence. As we look into your word today, bless us by your word. Let your word mix with faith in the ears of all the hearers today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Today we are concluding on the topic we started um, some weeks ago on experiencing the favor of God. Experiencing the favor of God. Before I continue the broadcast, let me also use this opportunity to invite you to our crossover service, 31st of December. 2021 from 10 p.m. in our church auditorium. I'm encouraging you to join us in this program because you are going to cross over to glory. You will cross over on the wings of favor. The way you transit into a new season of life matters. As we trust God together, the Almighty God will visit you and you will enter into the new year triumphantly, victoriously, all on the wings of God's favor in the name of Jesus. I look forward to receiving you and you'll be mightily blessed. So let's continue experiencing the favor of God. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and walk righteousness is accepted by him. Of a truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Whoever fears him and walk righteousness is accepted by him. We've seen from the word of God that God shows no favoritism. God shows no partiality. The implication of that is that anyone can qualify for the favor of God. Anyone that will do all that will have been the principle we have been teaching thus far. Once you do that, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has nothing to do with your nationality. It has nothing to do with your race. Once you fulfill the condition, once you meet up with the obligation, you will experience the favor of God. And that is my prayer for you. That even as we go into a new season, you will experience the favor of God. You will enter into the new season on the wings of God's favor. The favor of God will carry you to this new season and you will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. God shows no partiality. God shows no favoritism. Anyone that fulfills the condition of experiencing his favor is accepted by God to experience favor. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Let me do a little recap before I dwell on today's uh, uh, um, topic. In Acts chapter 10 from verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 10 from verse 1 to 4. There was a certain man in Caesarea named Colinus, a centurion of what 
was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the night hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Colinus, where and when he had observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. From, those, from verse 2, we saw the thing that Colinus did that qualified him for the favor of God. The Bible says he was a devout man. He had strong devotion to God. And we said, having strong devotion to God will qualify you to experience God's favor. Having strong devotion to the things of God will qualify you to, be, to experience the favor of God. And also, we are not just to stop there. You are also to have devotion to whatever God has committed into your hands. Devotion to your business. Devotion to your career. There is a 10,000 hour skills uh, of mastery skills. That if you devote sufficient time to any particular skill, particularly if you devote like 10,000 hours, you will become a master in that particular skills or in that particular field. So every time you show devotion to your work, you show devotion to your career, you show devotion to your business, whatever needed to be done in that business, if you put sufficient attention to it, you will experience favor. So he was a man of devotion. Devotion made him to experience favor. He was a man that feared God. He was a man that feared God. The Bible made us to understand in Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. It said, those that fear the Lord, they speak one to another. And a book of remembrance was opened before them, before God for them. So when you, when you fear God, God will remember you. And let me say this. Anyone that experiences the favor of God is being remembered by God. God remembers Sarah and favor her with a baby, even in her old age. God remember Hannah. Anytime you are remembered by God, it is your time of favor. So being remembered by God is what qualifies us to experience his favor. A lot of time when God wants to favor man, it's, it's, it's like this. God wants to do something in a particular region. And he's looking at who can anchor it for it, who can be the portman for it. And well, whoever God remember at that time is the one that is favored. God wanted to bring the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth to come and, uh, to come and die for, uh, for the sin of the um, humanity and, and, and get salvation for mankind. And he looked at the region. Who can I use? He saw Mary. He remembered Mary. When God wanted to bring salvation to the Gentile world, he looked at that region also and he remembered Colinius. Because the Bible does understand that the angel told Colinius, your prayers and your hands has come before God as a memorial. Something come before God as a memorial means that God keep remembering that person. Something keep popping up in the court of God, bringing Colinus name up. And Bible said it was his prayers and his arms. So, when you are devoted to God, God will remember you. When you fear God, God will remember you. When you are giving to prayer, the Bible says Colinus prayed always, God will remember you. And when you are generous, God will remember you. Today, are we dwelling on the force of generosity? The force of generosity will make God to remember you for favor. My prayer for you is that this season, God will remember you for favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, in that family, your case will be different for good. Your case will be different for testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus, in that community, in that city, in that nation, in that mission, 
God will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. The Bible made us to understand that Colina's prayer and harms had come up before God for a memorial. And God remembered Colinius and sent an angel to him and he experienced the salvation of God, being the very first in the entire Gentile world to experience such. And that is my prayer for you today, that the Almighty God will remember you in the name of Jesus for good. In that marriage, God will remember you. He'll remember you for fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, in your health, I don't know whatever seems to be ravaging your body, God will remember you. Earth will be restored to you. That sickness will die in the name of Jesus. That whatever whatever calamity the enemy has intended concerning you, particularly as we go into a new year, God will remember you. It will not, the thought of the enemy will not stand. God will preserve you. God will rescue you. In the name of Jesus, God remembered calling us. And one of the things that made that to happen to calling us was that the Bible say he was a generous man. The force of generosity will qualify anyone for the favor of God. And we have said that there's always a season of favor. He said, and you will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time, the set time for favor has come. Anytime you sense that it's your set time of favor, in previous broadcasts I've, I've, I've um, educated us on how to know when it's your set time of favor. Just like a woman that is pregnant and want to deliver, there will be an uneasiness around that woman. There will be, there will be this, there, this air of uneasiness, you just know something is about to happen. That is how it is also when you come into your season of favor. There will be an uneasiness around you. You know there is a shift that is coming. Even though you may, you may not be able to put your hands on it, but you just know. Anytime you sense it's your season of favor, be given to generosity. Be given to generosity. In the book of First Kings, chapter 3, Verse 3. First Kings chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says, And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. So anytime you want to engage on any form of generosity, let it be love motivated. A lot of people are doing all manner of generosity for all manner of reasons. But you see, the one that will be acceptable to God is the one that is love motivated. Let the love of God be your motivation for giving. For giving. Don't give just to, 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 uh, uh, to oppress people or to show them. And it, you have nothing to communicate. You just have to do with you and God. Bible says, concerning Solomon, and Solomon loved the Lord. Let your generosity be love motivated. It will, it will provoke favor for you. Every love motivated giving, every love motivated generosity will provoke the favor of God. Let's look at the same first king, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. First king chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For there was the there was the great place, there was the great high place. For that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offering on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give? You ask, what shall I give you? Solomon's giving that was love motivated provoked something in the court of God, and God appeared to him. Ask, what shall I give you? God gave him a blank check on the platform of his generosity. Are you trusting? Are you believing God for favor? Particularly as we go into a new season, as we go into a new year, be a man of generosity and let your motivation be love. 
God is able to do more, more and much more for you. You can use your generosity to trigger it. So every giving must be love motivated for it to be accepted to God. Bible says God is no respect of person. God shows no partiality. But in every nation, in every nation, among every people, in every race, anyone that fear him and does righteously is acceptable. It's accepted to him. So you want God to accept you for favor. Be given to generosity and let it be love motivated. Another thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. For your giving to provoke God's favor. The Bible made us to understand that it must not be with duress. It says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of a necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. You are to give as you are proposed in your heart. Not under duress. As you are proposed in your heart. So you make up your mind, this is what I want to do for God. You make up your mind, this is what I want to do for my neighbors. You make up your mind, this is what I want to do for the less privileged. You make up your mind, this is what I want to do for my community. As you are proposed in your heart, then you give. You, be, you, you show your generosity based on what you are proposed in your heart. And that will also provoke the favor of God in your direction. Your generosity that is love motivated. Your generosity that has your purpose in your heart from a willing heart, not under compulsion, not grudgingly. That will provoke God's favor in your direction. And your giving must be done cheerfully. You must do your giving cheerfully. You must express your generosity to God cheerfully. Express your generosity even to your neighbors cheerfully. Do it cheerfully. Because these are the things that will make that giving to be accepted. It is an accepted giving that will provoke favor in your direction. Particularly in this season of celebration. Give cheerfully give us your purpose in your heart and you will see the favor of god and my encouragement will also be this give bountifully second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 give bountifully but i say he who so sparingly we also reap sparingly and he who so bountifully we also reap bountifully so it's all about the type of favor you are expecting from God. When you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. When you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. You can provoke God's favor by your giving. Solomon sowed bountifully. He gave a thousand offering on, this, on the altar of God in one day. And God showed up for him, and his life and kingdom never remained the same afterward. So give bountifully because it is your access to God's uh, um, favor for your life. And I want to also say this give as you are led by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible made us to understand, say, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And every son of God, every of God's son will qualify for his favor. Particularly when the Spirit of God will come nudging you. 
give heed to it. In fact, any time from my personal experience that is nobody is, you are not hearing any message, you are nobody is compelling you, but something just come into your heart. The Spirit of God nudges you. The Spirit of God prompts you to give a miracle is around your life. Something is about to be set loose. It doesn't happen every time. But any time you sense from your within to give anything, just know that a miracle is around your life. So it, will, it, it you will do yourself the best good to heed to the prompting of the Spirit of God. So when you give as you are prompted by the Spirit of God, it opens your life up to God's favor. And my encouragement to you today is that sow a seed of favor. Look for people that may not even deserve something and bless them with it. Because what will make happen for others, God will make happen for you. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Sow a seed of favor and do it in such a way that you will, you, you, you will surprise whoever you are giving that seed to. Very little example. There are people that are out there, if you, you know, if you bless them with probably $5, they will thank you. If you bless them with $10, they will thank you. Go ahead and take it to another level. Bless such a person with $50 or $100 bill. And let that wow sign come upon them. Once you can make that wow sign come upon anybody's life, it's a seed that you have sown. God will make it happen for you too. That is the secret of experiencing God's unending favor. Find someone that has little or no expectation of you and give them an unusual seed of favor. It's a seed that you are sowing. You will definitely reap it too. That is how it works in God. Whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. As I round up today, there's a provision in God by the Spirit of God that will provoke the favor of God from God's anointed. There is a provision in God by the Spirit of the living God that will provoke the favor of God upon your life from God's anointed. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2. He said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of prison to those who are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Amplified Version has it to proclaim the year of God's favor upon his people. So it takes the anointing to proclaim favor. It takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit to proclaim favor. I'll be praying with you shortly. I am trusting God for a proclamation of a season of favor upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to proclaim the year of God's favor. Another passion said, another passion said to proclaim the season of God's favor, to bring God's people into their season of favor. By the Spirit of the living God today, by the hand of God today, God will bring you to your season of favor in the name of Jesus. All you need to do so that you will not miss your own season is to do these four principles that we have seen from the Word of God. Be a man of devotion. Devotion to God, devotion to whoever God has committed to your hand. Be a man that fear God. Be a man of prayer and be a man of generosity. And you will see favor, not just a one-off thing, but on continuous basis. By God's grace and from the house of favor, God has been exceptionally good to us. All on the platform of favor. All on the platform of his favor. And I have no doubt within me that today, God himself, by his mercy, we bring you into a season of favor. That as we enter into the new year, you will not go empty. 
God will show you mercy in the name of Jesus. Before I pray for you today, I want to give someone under the sound of my voice an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. That is where your foundation of continuous favor will be laid. If that is your prayer today, put your hand by your chest as a commitment to God and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from all my sin. Write my name in your book of life and in your kingdom. Don't let me be found wanting in the name of Jesus. As you have prayed that prayer, I agree with you today that your sins are forgiven. That the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all your sin. And that your name is written in God's book of life. And in the kingdom of God, you will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. And I declare upon your life a season of supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Definitely, you see our address on the screen. You can reach out to us. There are materials that we we'll have to pass across to you that you will help you in your spiritual journey. Now, under the grace and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I want to pray for someone under the sound of my voice. Because I know that the only reason God will bring this message across your way now is because He has made up His mind to favor you. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will come into your season of favor in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Uh, as an agreement with me in this prayer, you can stand up, you can put your hand on your body, just do something, like either you can stand up on your feet, you can put your hand by your chest, you can put your hand by your head, as I pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you have given me your word, I have sent it out to your people. I pray, Lord, that your mighty hand will come upon everyone under the sound of my voice now. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim upon your life a new season of God's favor. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim upon that marriage that troubled marriage, a new season of God's favor. In the name of Jesus, I command Satan, take away your hand, take away your leg, get off from that destiny, get off from that marriage. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I proclaim upon your body a season of favor, supernatural favor that will bring about healing now in the name of Jesus. Any hand of darkness upon your body that is ravaging your body with mysterious sicknesses and diseases, I cut off that hand of darkness now in the name of Jesus. I proclaim upon your physical body now. God's season of favor in the name of Jesus. I proclaim upon your finances supernatural favor. By the hand of God, by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I proclaim a season of favor upon your business, upon your career, upon your finances, in the name of Jesus. And upon everything that concerns you, upon your ministry, upon your assignment, start to experience favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. You are blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus. As I round up, 31st of December, 2021, is our crossover service. Join us as we cross over into the new year on the wings of favor. You will surely testify. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are now watching Amazing Fire TV.